Hi, I'm Paul McGuire. I want to pick up on this powerful key, this powerful tool that each one of us has been given, both as individuals and potentially as nations and cultures and communities. Now, what I'm talking about is not a tool like something you would use like a wrench or a screwdriver for a mechanical thing that you might be fixing or a, a shovel or whatever. I'm talking about a sophisticated tool, not a technologically sophisticated tool, but a tool which is spiritual, a spiritual tool that opens up an individual's destiny, unlocks a person's destiny, and also has the capacity and power to unlock the destiny of nations, peoples, and even communities. And you say, well, what tool has that power? Well, remember what Jesus Christ said. It was the mandate that he gave all of us who uh, are his disciples. In other words, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you accept the disciplines of Jesus Christ, you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, Christ told his disciples that they were to go into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations, and to occupy the land until he comes. Now, how do you make disciples of all nations? Well, you teach them the principles of the kingdom of God, and you apply it to every sphere and dimension of reality, not just the spiritual world. And obviously the spiritual world is if the most important because that's the, the teaching that by faith in Christ and faith in Christ alone, you can be saved, have eternal life if you invite Christ into your life. That's the most important message of Jesus. But that does not negate for one second the power and importance of his other messages. So how would one disciple the nations? The only way a person could disciple a, a nation is to communicate to a nation what's called a biblical worldview. And all a biblical worldview is, is a fancy term for applying all of the principles of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And the principles of the Bible are applicable to things like economics, to culture, to, so to society, to marriage, family, sexuality, science, mathematics, history. The totality of biblical knowledge is enormous. Tragically, and it's a really tragic thing that occurred, about a hundred years ago, or, or so, hundred years, 150 years ago, the evangelical movement, which at one time was known as the Bible-believing Christians, they made a very serious theological era, which we're suffering for today. And in fact, the, the tragedy of this era is still perpetuated today in evangelical churches. That era is the teachings of theological pietism. Now, pietism was a belief system developed by a Christian theologian named P.J. Spenner. And pietism simply means that, you, that true spirituality is defined by like a micro-focus on what is considered spiritual activities. Therefore, the only things that we can do that are truly spiritual and that truly please Jesus are things like going to church and Bible study and fellowship and prayer and evangelism. All of these things are very, very important. But nowhere in the Bible... Does God box up the truth into just what we call arbitrarily spiritual er uh, areas? This is a huge era. It's a huge uh, going down uh, the, the wrong road uh, onto oncoming traffic. And it's been embraced as if it was a biblical doctrine by the evangelical church. Jesus did not teach pietism. He did not teach that spirituality just consisted of prayer, Bible study, worship, prayer, so on and so forth. Jesus Christ taught and exemplified the fact that Jesus is, was, and will be to come. He is the Lord of all of life. 
He is not just the Lord of some little spiritual world. So Jesus is Lord of all of life, and that includes things, again, like economics, politics, governments, medicine, science, economics, social structures, the family unit, sexuality, marriage, and, and an endless spectrum of things. The Bible and a true biblical worldview has the power to impact positively all of those things. In addition, when it comes to our own individual and personal lives, we can only be set free by the truth to the degree that we embrace all of the truth, not just part of the truth. It's kind of like, let's just make believe for a moment that uh, all of the truth in the Bible is like one large pizza pie divided into different slices. Now that's the evangelical perspective of biblical truth, by the way. The evangelical perspective of biblical truth is that life is like a pizza pie divided into individual slices. And one slice of the pizza pie would be the spiritual things. Then there's the slice called the economic things, the marriage things, and another slice is the economic things, the governmental things, and so on and so forth. So, the evangelical Christian culture has falsely divided reality up and Jesus Christ up into separate individualistic compartments, forgetting the main principle in the Bible, which is Jesus is Lord of all of life, every dimension and sphere of life. Jesus, to put it bluntly, is Lord of the entire pizza pie, not just the slice that says spiritual things. And once you understand that, and once you have a revelation of that by the power of the Holy Spirit in your mind, what happens is that the energizing power of the totality of the Word of God, which means a biblical worldview in the true sense of the word, pierces the human heart, mind, and soul through the power of the Holy Spirit anointing God's truth, and its purpose and intention is to send the power of God's Word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit into your heart and in, into your mind and life in every area of your life, mind, and heart. And when that happens, the Spirit of God creates a great awakening. It births a revival in your inner man or woman, and you rejoice because now you know the truth that sets you free. And the real truth that sets you free has never been, has never been simply the fact that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, that's the most important thing. Yes, that's what get, gets you into heaven. But being able to be used by God, uh, being able to be blessed by God, being able to be a blessing to others, is all based on whether or not you are willing to accept the entirety of God's truth and how God's truth, through a biblical worldview, applies to every area of life. Now, why is this important? This is perhaps one of the most important things that we can learn as Christians. But you see, there's an oppositional force a very powerful oppositional force that is blocking us from seeing and realizing that truth. There is a powerful oppositional force that does not want us to know the full truth that will truly set us free. Why is that? Because you see there's an, an oppositional force to God himself, that's Lucifer or Satan, this powerful angel who is currently leading a rebellion against God and his people in an insane attempt by Satan to become God, to be worshipped as God. And he raises up one-third of the fallen angels to follow him and uh, various hierarchies of man-made occult structures like the Illuminati and the secret societies like Skull and Bones and the Freemasons and so on and so forth. That's how Satan controls this world, and this world system is known as Babylon, Mystery Babylon, which originated 
at the Tower of Babel in ancient Babylon. So there's this oppositional force whose sole intent is to block us from understanding the full truth of God's Word. Now, why would Satan want to do that? Well, first of all, the primary target for Satan blinding people's eyes is to prevent them from seeing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and becoming saved and having eternal life and spending all eternity with your Savior, Jesus Christ, in paradise, a place called heaven. That's his primary assault. That's why the Word of God says, For the God of this world, Satan or Lucifer, has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving that they might not see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So you see, God's Word, communicated effectively under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, has the power to destroy that blinding mechanism in the inner man or inner woman of people. And that blinding mechanism is what the Bible and the Apostle Paul described as a stronghold. A stronghold is like a fortress in your mind or heart that prevents you and barricades you from knowing the truth that will set you free. And a stronghold is a kind of thought that transcends mere biological impulses because a satanic stronghold is a series of thoughts, or it could be an ideology, it can be a false religion, it can be a false teaching, it can be New Age doctrine, it can be any number of lies. It can even be a heretical and false interpretation of the Bible, as in the case of pietism. All of those things, energized by Satan, become satanically energized arguments that are lodged inside the human soul like fortresses that prevent people from accessing, experiencing, knowing, and receiving the full truth that will set them free. Therefore, they're prisoners, and as prisoners, they're programmed through Luciferian power, through the power of Babylon in this world system, and through the power of technology and science, which has integrated itself with ancient sorcery or magic that began in ancient Babylon. So how do you set men and women free? You effectively present the gospel to them, but that means you must communicate the Word of God as inspired and inerrant, and you must communicate the Word of God effectively and strategically, and you must communicate the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When that happens, the Word of God functions like a sword, a sword of the Spirit, and it literally goes into the inner man and inner uh, woman of people that have been made slaves and are being held captive and don't even realize it. Churches in America are bursting to the seams with Christians who are prisoners and slaves because no one's ever told them the truth. So they're playing the game of Christianity. They're playing church, and playing church has nothing to do with real Christianity. So when Jesus said, make disciples of all nations, he wants to overthrow this temporary rule of Satan in nations and nation states and in individuals. And the way he does that is he, if, the, if truth is communicated properly, then it dislodges, it dissolves, it's blown away, it's detonated by the Spirit of God, which is the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, coming from the root word dunamis, which means dynamite. It's an actual force that is projected into your soul and the souls of any person, if they're willing to receive it, that will bring life and it will bring such a download of truth into their body, soul, and spirit that they will be set free. Wow, what an incredible, awesome thing. It's mind-blowing. Now, here's where it goes from mind-blowing to beautiful to spectacular to awesome in about one quarter of a nanosecond. It's like that quick. You experience revolutionary transformation when the kingdom of God manifests itself within you and you begin to step into the kingdom of God. All of a sudden, 
problems that you have been held captive by since your childhood, such as the problem concerning identity, the lack of identity, the acceptance of a false identity, programming, programming, people are programmed and they don't even know they've been programmed. People have been put under scientific mind control and they don't even realize they're under mind control. People have been exposed to hypno-programming and they don't even realize they've been programmed. And on and on it goes. Now, this is not some speculative thing I'm throwing out at you. This is the basis of over 40 years of research in my life. If you read the teachings of Sir Aldous Huxley, one of the most prominent, prominent members of the British elite, the author of Brave New World, when he was speaking at a convention of neuroscientists at the University of Berkeley in 1961, he told these neuropsychiatrists these words. Huxley said, in the truly effective scientific dictatorship, men and women will learn to love their slavery. And then Huxley added that in the scientific dictatorship, men and women can be programmed, they can be put under subtle, subtle mind control so they will actually love all their duties as slaves and not even have the awareness that they are slaves. Guess what? Huxley wasn't talking about the future. Huxley was talking about the present then. And certainly, from the time Huxley spoke those words in 1960, uh, 1961 until the present moment, the reality is, on planet Earth, that's ruled by an invisible global government that consists of the world's most powerful families and wealth that are uh, that work together and they're also members of high level uh, occult societies like the Illuminati and they not only can uh, participate in occult and satanic worship and that's provable they admit it themselves just read uh, Rothschild's magazine, The Economist, the most prestigious magazine internationally in economics is called The Economist and it's published by um, Rothschild. And on the cover you continually see occultic symbols, tarot cards, and everything else reflecting the Rothschild family belief system in the occult. And they, they don't apologize for it. So. You and I are called to set men and women free in this environment. Now, I want to give you an opportunity to, to get a couple of research, uh, resources. As many of you know, I'm the author of uh, over 31 books. And I write books because books are the most powerful teaching tools that I know of. Because if a book is written properly, you can communicate truth in a fast-moving, entertaining, you can grip people's minds, you can transform people's minds, and reading can be a fun and powerful experience. I don't write boring books. I write books that are dynamic because that's the only way you can capture people's attention. And I want to suggest to you that if you want to know about whether or not that you've been programmed or sub subjected to hypnoprogramming uh, pro or uh, scientific mind control or whatever, that you read my book, Conquering the Matrix, because it will tell you whether you or someone you love have, has been subjected to programming and how you can be set free from programming, which is limiting not only you, but your loved ones and maybe the nation that you live in. And it's all based on Bible prophecy and a study that begins in ancient Babylon and uh, talks about modern science. So visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us and get yourself a copy of Conquering the Matrix and then Mass Awakening, which deals with mass mind control. When you read those books, along with A Prophecy of the Future of America, which talks about MTV music Illuminati video programming and other such things, you will be aware of the tricks they use to put you under uh, a kind of mind control and you'll be able to be effective in setting people free and changing the course of your destiny and the nation that you live in. That's what it means by 
Jesus saying, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us.